From Television City in Hollywood, the Jack Benny program with his special guests Art Linkletter and Peggy King, presented by Lucky Strike. Light up, a lucky, it's light up time. Be happy, go lucky, it's light up time. For the taste that you like, light up, a lucky strike. Relax. It's light up time. Our friend Happy Joe Lucky has the right idea. Relax and light up a better tasting Lucky Strike. You'll find that Luckies do taste better, and for good reasons. First, LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And then that fine, good tasting tobacco is toasted. It's toasted to taste even better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. So, light up a Lucky. You'll say it's the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. For the taste that you like, light up a lucky strike. Right now. Light up a lucky. It's light up time. Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lucky Strike program. You know, this is my third show of the, um, you know, I was just thinking, I don't know why I come out here every show and I keep saying thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, I don't know what I'm thanking you for. I mean, you get in here for nothing. <laughs> And believe me, that wasn't my idea. <laughs> you know, I've always felt that it would be fair to charge the audience a nominal fee for coming in to, to see our shows. You know, let's say a dollar for adults, 50 cents for kids, maybe a quarter for dogs. <laughs> now, seal. Of course, seals I let in for nothing because, you see, they applaud a lot. <laughs> That's about the silliest thing that I'll say today. <laughs> but anyway, on our show tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to... Oh, by the way, did you see the wonderful show, hour and a half show, that Noel Coward and Mary Martin did yesterday? Wasn't that the most... Really, that was the most terrific thing I've ever seen in my life. Imagine just two people, Noel Coward and Mary Martin, alone on the stage for 90 minutes. I thought it was just sensational, you know. Of course, I had the same idea, you see, but then if I did it, you know, with just two of us on the stage, everybody would say that I'm cheap. <laughs> Of course, Coward, you know, Noel Coward, he's so sophisticated and suave, and many times I've been compared to him, you see. A lot of people have said that I'm another coward. I used to say that when I was in the Navy. But when I was in London, ladies and gentlemen, about in 1952... Pardon me. I used to, I used to go in at, 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 to visit Pardon Coward me. at his home, Pardon you me. see. And he had, the most, he had the largest Pardon swimming pool that I... I the, largest, the largest swimming pool. Lady, would you move your big feet so I can get through? Well, you be quiet. There's a show going on. Just trying to get a better seat. Pardon me. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> now that uh, everybody's comfortable with <laughs> go on, you, know, you are comfortable, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, from here I can see everything. <laughs> That's what I meant before about letting people in for nothing. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, on our show tonight, we have, really, as a guest Jack, star, Jack, one of Jack, the... Jack, 
Don. Jack, I'm sorry, but I just had to come out here. You know, I uh, stopped by the drugstore on the way to the studio today, and I picked up the latest issue of Look Magazine. Mm -hmm. And Jack, guess whose picture's on the front cover? I haven't the slightest idea. <laughs> Jack, it's you. It's your picture. No. Yes. <laughs> and you oh, want to know something what? else? What? There's a big story in there about you written by William Soroyan. All about me? Yeah, here, I'll show you. I can't get over it. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> right here on page... Page... Page 51. <laughs> Pictures and everything. Oh, Jack, you knew about it all the time. Well, of course I knew. I, I bought 9,000 copies. <laughs> I know about it. Anyway, I think it's a wonderful article. And I particularly like this paragraph where he mentions that you've been sponsored by Lucky Strike for 12 years. Well, I knew you'd like that. Now. I liked it even better if he'd said Lucky's around and firm and fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Don, this article... Not one word about light-up time. Don, this article wasn't about Lucky Strike. It was about me, so don't get yourself all upset about I'm it. I'm not upset, Jack. I just can't understand why he couldn't find room for five more words. Just five words. It's toasted to taste better. Look, Don, the article is written. There's nothing you can do about it. Now forget about it. Now leave me alone. Let me get on with the show. Oh, all right. Just five more words. That's all I wanted in here. Great big long <laughs> His five chins are shaking. <laughs> Of course, there's one thing I like about Don Wilson. He's so loyal. And this is what I like about everybody in my cast. You know, they all take care of their own business. Like, Don worries about the commercial. Dennis sings. I try to get laughs on the show. Oh, speaking of laughs, you know, today, I, I was coming here, I was walking down Fairfax Avenue, you see, and a fellow... Louder! <laughs> And a fella stopped me on the street and he said, asked me if I could let him have $5,000 because he'd like to get some dinner, you see? So I said to him, why? Why do you need $5,000 for dinner? Louder! <laughs> so I said, because I want to eat, he said, because I want to eat in a drive-in and I haven't got a car. <laughs> Is that loud enough for you? Yeah, and I'll make it funnier. <laughs> Look, mister, you who trying to get in the act, oh, come up here just a minute, will you yeah, please? Okay. Just come up. Pardon me. No, not that way. You've got to go by the way of Azusa. Come back. This way. I told you, the minute you let people in for nothing, I know all of you folks are nice. But somebody <laughs> like this. Now, Mr. Mr. Fink. Fink? If I ain't you, you ain't Fink. <laughs> now, Mr. Fink, I didn't bring you up here to embarrass you. But, I mean, as long as you've got a chip on your shoulder, I mean, why did you come in here in the first place? Who wanted to come in here? I was standing in line waiting for the Lassie show. <laughs> Some guy comes over to me and says, they're giving refrigerators away in here. What do you mean we give refrigerators away in here? Well, we look, in television, a program has either got to give entertainment or a refrigerator. Now, where's my icebox? <laughs> look, Mr. Fing. F-I-N-Q-U-E. I know, I know. That's French. <laughs> French? In Paris, it's Fink K. I don't care what it is, and you're not getting a refrigerator. So go back to your seat and be quiet. Just sit down and be quiet. Okay, okay. Twelve programs this week, and I still ain't got a stick of a <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these are the problems that come up when you do live shows. You know, you never know what's going to happen. Now, I have reserved this spot for a very special treat, because I've asked, as one of my guest stars, a young lady who practically overnight became 
a sensation on television as an entertainer. The singing star of the George Goble Show, Miss Peggy King. <laughs> Peggy, I, I want to tell you how very happy I am that you're here with me on this show. Hmm? Oh, thank you, Jack. You know, I can hardly believe it. All these wonderful things are happening to me. You know, because a year ago I was still doing singing commercials, and now here I am on the same program with America's second favorite comedian. <laughs> second? You know, Peggy, this wasn't exactly written that way. I know, Jack, but I showed the script to George Goble last night, and he changed it a little. <laughs> oh. He thought it would be funnier this way. Oh, I see. Well, any time I want advice from a dirty bird, I'll ask him. <laughs> now, Peggy, you know, I've got nothing... I love George Goble. I think he's very, very clever. But he's young. You know, and he's, he needs years of experience. And I'm sure that when he's in show business, as long as I've been, I mean, he, he naturally will improve. Well, that's true, Jack, but in my opinion, well, even now, George is tops. <laughs> well, of course, that's your opinion, you think. Fortunately, we're living in a country where we can express our feelings either way. <laughs> and I'm just about to. <laughs> Gee, Jack, I thought you'd agree with me. After all, last year when George won the Emmy Award, well, you made the presentation. I made... Oh, that's right, I did. I did hand him the Emmy Award. Uh, George said you threw it at him. <laughs> George said... Listen, let's forget George and get to my show now. Now, now what are you going to sing? Uh, this is where love walks out, brother. That's the title of it, huh? Well, take it, sister, and I'll see you right <laughs> When trouble had you down I've shared the happy moments That seldom came around I've lived a bit and loved a lot I guess I know the score But I've got great big news for you I don't love you anymore this is where love walks out, brother I know what love's about This is where I came in, brother And this is where love walks out My heart's not made of tin, brother And you're too much for me And after all we've been, brother I'm through with misery You gave me one routine too many I began to doubt you Where love walks out, brother And doesn't it seem strange That after all we've been, brother My heart will never change For this is where love walks out You gave me one routine Too many I began to doubt you and Though my little world Will be an empty place To face without you This is where love walks out, brother Awfully cute, really. That was wonderful. Oh, thank you, Jack. And she sounded pretty good out here, too. <laughs> you keep out of this. Jack, who is that? Oh, some guy named Fink. If I ain't kill you, I I know, I know. <laughs> and stop making so much noise. People watching the show at home, they can, they, can, they can see everything you do. They can hear you. They can? Yes. 
Hey, Martha, keep the cold water running on the butter. I ain't got the ice box yet. <laughs> and you're not going to get one either, so sit down. I'm terribly sorry. And I'll see you later on. Goodbye. Sir. You know, ladies and gentlemen, in the past couple of weeks, I've received fan letters from friends, people who tell me how much they enjoy my show, but they also add that sometimes they feel that my show is directed to adults. And I've had friends of mine who have children say to me, Jack, why don't you do a show sometimes that our kids can enjoy, our children? Okay? So we're going to do that right now. And to help me out, I've called upon a gentleman who just loves working with and being with children and here he is, Art Linklet. Well, Art, it was certainly nice of you to give up your Sunday and be here with me. Anything to get out of the house, Jack. My kids were driving me nuts. <laughs> well, Art, when I called you and asked you to come here on the show, did you know exactly what I wanted you to do? Well, I think so, Jack. You wanted me to duplicate a part of my daily house party show where I talk to the little kids from the schools. Yes, this so, is so, so my show is different for yeah. children, you know? So I brought along some little school kids today, five yeah. years of age. Oh, well, and you have them with you? Yes, I have. Well, all right, if the children are with you, the stage is yours. Thank Take you, it. Jack. Now, I should... Uh, I should explain, ladies and gentlemen, uh, many of you, well, some of you work during the day. And uh, you perhaps don't see my daytime show. I talk to the kids strictly unrehearsed. They just come out of the school and tell me what's going on around the house. That's all. <laughs> Open the curtains and let's meet the... <laughs> These are my four little guests. And uh, how are you? Fine. What's your name? Richard Houston Farmer. How old are you, Mr. Farmer? I am five and a half. Uh-huh. Let's talk about... Um, well, girlfriends, for instance. Okay. You got any? Well, quite a few. How many you got? Ah, uh, about 90 of them. Well, no wonder you're such a flirty-looking fella. How about your family? Got any secrets? Yeah, a couple. Well, tell me one of them. Well, uh, my mother's in the audience, so I guess I'll have to tell. All right. Uh, my girl doesn't know this. Uh, we're going to get a baby on Christmas Eve. And she'll have to take care of it. Really? Well, does, does your daddy know? No, but he's in the audience. <laughs> your daddy doesn't know yet, huh? Well, for heaven's sakes, he's just finding it out, huh? You're right. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, did they give you any special orders today? Yes, they have. What, what orders did they give you? Well, they gave me um, to... Uh, to go to the bathroom and not say any bad words. Oh, well. <laughs> well, he obeyed, didn't he? No. What's oh, your name? Julia Caroline O'Neill. How old are you, Julia? Five and a half. Uh-huh. Do you have any boyfriends? Yes, two. Who are they? One here and the other. Wait a minute, are you one? Yep. <laughs> Gregory, two. Yeah. How do you know they're your boyfriend? Because one kisses me, and the one that doesn't kiss me is right here, and the one that kisses me is over on the morning. Oh, wh why don't you kiss her? Because I, I don't know about her yet. Yeah, just don't go around kissing girls you don't know about. Who do you think's smarter, boys or girls, Julia? Girls. Why? Because they smell sweeter than boys, and they can have babies and boys can't. <laughs> That's right. That's right. What's your name, young fella? David Caswell. David who? David Caswell. How do you spell Caswell? I don't know, but I'm, I'm sure I could write it. What kind of letters does it have? Here's one of them, and I can make two. I can make all the letters. Oh, yeah, that's a good letter. <laughs> David, uh, do, you, do you have any girlfriends, David? No. Mm -hmm. Your bachelor. <laughs> no. Not either one. What are you going to be when you grow up? 
find us. What do you study? I'll study about germs. What do germs look like? I think they look like people. <laughs> look at all those germs out there. Well, here... Smaller. Oh, they're smaller. Thank you. What's your name? Christine Lynn Farley. Christine, how old are you? Five years old. Ah, you're a pretty little girl, aren't you? Thank you. Uh-huh. Do you have any problems or any complaints at all? No. Does your daddy have any complaints? Yes, and there's no cold beer. <laughs> well, I don't blame him at that. What are you going to be when you grow up, honey? A housewife. And have a husband and all. Well, you have a lot of them ask you because you're one of the prettiest girls we've seen. Did you enjoy meeting the children? Those were some of the children. Now we have some more little children. Would you come out, please, children, right here? Oh, aren't they cute? seated children so we can get on with the interviews. That's fine. That's good. Now, let's see. Let's, who'll be first? I'm first. I'm first. No, no. You just wait your turn. I'll get around to you in a minute. Now, here's a cute little boy. What, uh, what's your name, little boy? I'm Donald Wilson, and I'm nine years old. What do they call you at school? Don or, or Donald? My teacher calls me Fatso. Teacher, but what about the other kids in the classroom? Well, in my class, there's no room for other kids. <laughs> well, let's see. I'm next. I'm next. You I'm next. wait your turn. <laughs> Be careful. This is my set, you know. girl? Peggy Chang. Eh, oh, isn't that a pretty name? Are there any more at home like you? Yes, I have two little brothers. Uh-huh, that's that. Oh, by the way, I want to ask you, uh, do you always suck your thumb? Uh-huh. Well, what about your brothers? They have their own thumbs. <laughs> well, now, let's see. I'm next. No, I'm next. You wait your turn, please. You must wait your turn. Uh, do, you, uh, do you read, Peggy? Oh, yes. What is your favorite story? Well, my favorite story is about the mother that wanted her daughters to grow up and have beautiful clothes and jewelry and go to the palace and dance with the rich men and maybe marry the prince. That's your favorite story, huh? Uh-huh, Cinderella. Oh, Cinderella. I thought she was talking about the Gabor sisters. <laughs> well, I'll be back to you in a moment. Now, here's a cute uh, now, little Now, you fella. skip me. You skip me. I'm next. Now, now you're cheating. Just a minute. Now. I'm running the program. And I'm I'll... cheating. I'm going to tell my mother. Now, look. She's a lawyer. I don't care if your mother's a lawyer. Now, you get this straight. I'm running this show, and if you don't wait your turn, you can just get up and leave this place. What? <laughs> now, this little boy is a real cute little lad, and what's your name? Rochester Van Jones. Now, that is... Isn't that a cute little Davy Crockett outfit you have on? Thank you. Uh -huh. Now, where were you born? On a mountaintop in Tennessee. <laughs> well, Davy Crockett was a kind of an outdoor man. Are you fond of wildlife and animals? Oh, I am, I am. What's your favorite animal? Fried chicken. <laughs> I'm next. You're next, and now I'll get around to you. What is your name? Jackie Benny, and I'm eight years old. Eight years old? <laughs> now, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a violinist. I practice every day. I practice three, four hours every day. I want to be a violinist. Well, that's wonderful. When you grow up, I suppose you want to be the greatest violinist in the world. No, the richest. <laughs> you know, folks, I think you'll make it. <laughs> now, where do you live, little boy? 360 North Camden Drive. Oh, I know where that is. 
Uh huh. It's right down the street in Beverly. Mm-hmm. And I'm eight years old. I know. You told me that before. I know. It's so much fun saying it. <laughs> Such a little boy with such hairy knees. Now, <laughs> I think uh, it's time for... Pardon now. me. It's Pardon me. What? Pardon me. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What kind of a cheap operation oh, is this? Here's, the same, here's the same fella butting it all the time. He's been butting it all through the show. Now, look, Mr. Fink. If I ain't kill you, in. I know what it is. Well, where's my refrigerator? You're not getting a refrigerator. Now, just a minute, Jack. If it's just a refrigerator, give it to him. Hey, you I like. Hey, you can call me Frank. That's my first name. Frank? F-R-A-N-Q-U-E. Now, cut that out. Now, let me tell you something. If you think you can come up here and cause this disturbance, you're sadly mistaken. Well, if I don't get my refrigerator, I'm going to go to the head office and cause a real stink. What? S-T-I-N-Q-U-E. <laughs> Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first, a word to cigarette smokers. Light up, my lucky. It's light up time. Be happy, go lucky. It's light up time. For the taste that you like, light up, my lucky strike. Relax. It's light, light up time. The end of a perfect date when you stop for a light snack and linger with your Luckies. Why Luckies? Well, that's easy. Luckies taste better. Naturally, they do. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And then this fine, good-tasting tobacco is toasted. It's toasted to taste even better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. So, next time you want to linger, light up a Lucky. For the taste that you like, light up a Lucky Strike. Right now. Light up a lucky. It's light up time. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, it was fun wearing this kitty outfit, you know, although it was quite expensive. But I'll get it back next week when I go door to door, trick or treat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to watch Ann Southern next week, and I'll be back in two weeks. And Mary's going to be on the show, too, on my show two weeks from now. And also, as my guest, one of the world's greatest violinists, Mr. Isaac Stern. And we're going to play a duet together. I don't know exactly what the number's going to be. He suggests. Sigonavizen by Sarah Seffi. You see, of course, I lean toward the Yellow Rose of Texas. <laughs> Which one we're going to do, I don't know. And incidentally, on November 3rd, I'll be back for the auto show on the Shower of Stars. Thanks very much. <laughs> tonight's program are Mel Blanc and Michael Rahill. Remember one week from tonight on this same station, be sure and watch Ann Southern in Private Secretary. Jack Benny's next television show will be in two weeks.